All right, here's a quick tip about composition. Um, so you have a focal point, right? Anywhere on the piece, right? You usually pick anywhere. Um, and you could say like, oh, well, let's make some arrows pointing to it. Like, people, look here. Please look here. Um, and this is how you kind of guide the eye to the focal point, right? And you can sort of use that as an underlay for drawing things and uh, controlling your composition, right? And those things in the background could be anything. It could be... Uh, you know, lights, swords, whatever. Um, and it's just kind of a start of how you might want to go about doing that. You might have heard of a one, two, three read. So you have one object, two objects, three objects, and they sort of all act in the same composition. And the first thing is like, okay, we have uh, a first read that leads to the second thing and the third thing, yada yada, and it keeps you within the picture, right? Uh, the illustration allows you to look at something and then sort of move your eye around and uh, you know, come back to the main focal point, which is what these arrows right here are pointing at. And, you know, we can use these arrows to reinforce that first read focal point, right? Um, and then we use some kind of other arrow to guide us to the second, and then the third, and then back to the first, right? So let's go ahead and draw on top of that and see what happens. And so we bring back that those arrows and those circles that I drew in the first place and put them on top of the drawing, you'll see that for the focal point, for the, well, the first read, I put the, the head, right? I want everybody to look here first, right? And you'll see that I added a bunch of other arrows pointing to that compositionally, which I, of course, I will disguise as something else. And uh, like this arm is a big statement, right? So I'm making the arm kind of say, hey, look at this face, right? And uh, it acts as a uh, a pointing device, right? And the whole kind of image has um, a direction towards that focal point. Um, and then the second read is here uh, down by the knee area, right? And I could put some kind of uh, decoration, a weapon, potion, scroll, something, you know, something fantasy. doesn't matter. Um, and then uh, from there I would uh, somehow lead up to the third focal point, which is up here on the top left, and it's going to be on the sword, right? It's pretty obvious once you, like, get the idea of it, right? Um, and what I'll do is put some kind of shiny stuff or something uh, when I, if and when I paint that part on the sword. And then the next tricky part is how do we bring us back to uh, the first read, you know? Uh, because there's this chance that people will look elsewhere outside of the composition if it points somewhere else. So uh, going back to that arrow, I figured I would draw a cape, right? Or something, you know, it, it could have been clouds in the far background or mountains, but something to lead the eye um, back to where we started, right? Um, and once you get the, the hang of this uh, a, a, as a very fundamental thing, it'll start to happen naturally as you do other drawings and paintings. It'll be subconscious, right? And so, there you have it. I think, uh, hopefully this explains how to use uh, arrows as a sort of compositional device to lead the eye. And of course, keep in mind that the more angles that you have, the more dynamic it will feel. Because if, if you notice, there's no right angles. There's no perfectly horizontal or perfectly straight up lines, except for maybe his back. And so just keep that in mind as well. And there are a bunch of other little tips and tricks that, I'll, that I'd love to get to you guys. But um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more.